Yo, welcome to episode number three of the Conversate HQ Success Series. In this video, we're going to speak to Yah, who's done over sixteen and a half thousand dollars in his first three and a half weeks using Commerce HQ, and it was just over a little, just over a little. Uh, it was just over. 22,000 in the first full calendar month. So it's an amazing story that I'm gonna look forward to sharing with you. And also, if we're not friends yet, click subscribe, join the family, and you'll be able to see uh, future upcoming videos of the Commerce HQ Success Series. And, uh, and if you do have any questions of your own that you would like asked uh, to the future guest, then please put them comments in below, and I'll try and ask them to the future guests on this series. So with that being said, let's jump straight into it, and I'll see you there. Welcome to episode number three of the Commerce HQ Success Series. Uh, today I'm speaking to Yah, who done over $22,000 in his first month using Commerce HQ. So welcome, Yah. Thanks for coming, man. Oh, no problem. How are you doing today? I'm doing good, mate. I'm doing good. So it's uh, been a beautiful day here in England, uh, and it's uh, you know it's gonna be it's a nice chilled evening tonight. So it's a perfect night to speak to you about all this stuff. So, so look before cool. I actually get stuck into this, uh, I just want to say uh, anyone who's listening who doesn't know what Commerce HQ is, you can uh, check it out. I'm gonna put links in the description where you can get a walkthrough. So you can just go and check it out, see the actual features of uh, Commerce HQ, see the difference between Commerce HQ and Shopify. And also, if you do want to get it, you can get three stores for the price of one. So it's two free stores. Uh, you get a multi-store plan all for the price of a one-store plan and that's in the description so with that being said let's get stuck into it so nice one yeah thanks for uh being here again like i said and uh first question that i really want to ask you is uh you know how did you get into e-commerce you know what's been your journey and uh, how long have you been into it and what's it been like for you getting into it all well i was in an accident at my job yeah. and i got a settlement and i already have a website for music media and stuff like that and i was already selling print on demand items on there and I just wanted to study more to scale up that website. Yeah. And then I was introduced to the AliExpress model and different yeah. drop shipping models and just went on and paid for different trainings and things like that. And yeah. Cool, man. Cool. So there's, uh, you know, like it's probably like me, probably tried a, a few different things uh, when it comes to e-commerce and a few different trainings and stuff like that. But have you been, so how long have it since you've been into e-commerce? I mean, we spoke before, so you've been in uh, so drop shipping. September 12th. September, September 12th. 12th. So last year, uh, September 20th. 12th. Uh, mm -hmm. You were using Shopify because we were just speaking. You were using Shopify up till literally just recently. Uh, before I come aware, you posted something in the in the Commerce Crew group, group. Sorry, the Commerce Hates Q group uh, mm -hmm. about your first month with that. But you have actually been drop shipping with Shopify since September. Then, so you know you've you've yeah. done that. You've got a bit of uh, you know experience with it all, and then you've moved to uh, to Commerce HQ. So. Let let the people know. Listen, you know, what was the reason behind your switch from Shopify to Commerce HQ? Well, I mean, the first thing is knowing who to listen to. I mean, you go to Shopify, there's a million people that that want you to pay them to teach you different things. Yeah. And testing my website speed was the biggest thing. Yeah. That bounce rate. I mean, Tanner Larson, I listened to his thing about the bounce rate and the issue, and I was like, this don't make sense. Yeah. I mean, you pay you for a theme. I test the theme. It's supposed to be fast. Um, I use this app they had that tracks each visitor and it showed my bounce rate was like 70%. Really? That's a lot of It was like, traffic. right, and my, my theme was totally optimized for sales. I was getting sales, but it just, I wasn't satisfied with it. Yeah. So I went, searched on Google for different, you know, platforms, trying to see anything that was about speed. Yeah. And then I got on YouTube and you know how to Google and Facebook, their, their, uh, algorithm is and their pixels is just awesome yeah your video suggested as soon as i searched it was right there and i right. read about it you saying about the bounce rate and everything and i was yeah. and it had the apps built in yeah and i just signed up and i took my time to, to I, I signed up march 15th took my yeah. time learning the platform to it took me a day to you know to actually learn everything as far as just hooking up the store that was easy but i wanted yeah. to know the platform go through the boot camp training yeah so i could launch the first week, oh, well, it was like the last couple of days in March. I actually launched the store. Yeah. But it was mainly the bounce rate because you pay so much money for your ads, you pay for these visitors, yeah. and if your store don't load in time, you wasting you waste the money. Exactly, exactly. You imagine so, like seventy percent of your people that you've paid for who've gone to your mm -hmm. store through Facebook, and then they're not going to see the actual store because of the bounce rate. So it's a big, big issue, isn't it, right there? Yeah, because my when I made my my custom audiences on my Shopify store after about four or five months, my audience only had like five thousand people. 
Yeah. My first month, my first month alone with Commerce HQ, I'm retargeting 12,000 people. Really? So that's, that's one month versus five or six months. It's an amazing I'm difference. Amazing retargeting difference. seven, you know what I mean? That's a big deal. I mean, I make, yeah. and that, if you know anything about warm traffic and retargeting, that's where you're going to make your biggest, you know, that's when you make your most of your money. Exactly. So exactly. that right there was enough for me. Like, okay, I got my own audience now yeah. that I can promote to. Yeah. For you know what I mean, and keep adding to that audience. So yeah. that alone was just, and I tested it. Yeah. Same product, my Shopify store as my Commerce HQ store. Yeah. And within a day and a half, I sold about, I'd say at least twenty times more than I did on my Shopify store. Same ad copy, same targeting, just two different fan, fa- I mean, two different fan pages. Yeah. But both, and actually, the fan. This is this is how how much better Commerce HQ is. Yeah. The one fan page I use for my Shopify store is labeled the same name as the store. Yeah. The other one is a, a, a business page that my sister has. It has yeah. nothing to do with the store branding name written in it at all. And yeah. it's still sold 10 times more, 20 times more than my Shopify store. Crazy. Isn't it? And literally, just the platform. You didn't do nothing else when it comes to the market. And that stayed the same, really. You just just changed the platform. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, you hit the ground running. We spoke before this, and you were just saying, like, you know, within you knew that product which you've done really well in your first month was uh, was a winner, but you just weren't getting the results with Shopify, and then you've made the switch, and then mm-hmm. literally within thirty days. So when I first seen uh, your screenshot, so you posted about your success on the Commerce Crew group, you had done sixteen and a half thousand in the first three and a half weeks, but by the end of the actual month, the calendar month, you actually said it went up to about twenty two thousand dollars. So you know that that's right. that's amazing, and I tell you, for for mm-hmm. anyone getting into e commerce, that's a, it's a really, really great result, and to see such a such a, a contrast, you know, it's a big, big difference. You know what I mean? And uh, mm-hmm. no, it's good to hear that stuff. So, like, what's your experience around using the platform? So, you said you've been using Shopify. You come to Commerce HQ. How do you actually find the platform with everything, whether it's like the the, the apps or or the functionality or any you know any of it? What do you find? You know, how do you well, find it, using it? It's easier if you. I mean, I've been doing websites for about eight, nine years. Like I said, I, do, I have my own media platform. Yeah. But it's easier because you don't have to search for the apps. And you know how some apps on Shopify, you have to put coding in and all that type of stuff. Mm-hmm. It's not like that. You just put the app in, write in what you want, it loads up. CMS, you just basically change your name to most of the stuff. I mean, unless right. you add a page in, and all you really do is add a URL, whatever, you know what I mean, to link it. And yeah. there's videos there. Like I said, I figured it out in, like, in less than a day. Yeah, it's quite straightforward, you know, isn't it? It's quite uh, yeah, it's real friendly. easy. You know, I mean, most people get used to doing the same repetition, and they don't want to open their mind up to something new. Yeah. But it takes less time to do a Commerce HQ store than it does to do a Shopify store. I don't care if you pay for a theme; it's yeah. still easier <laughs> with Commerce yeah, HQ. One hundred percent, man. I mean, I've done videos for yeah. fun where I've done a. I mean, it was a basic setup, but you can get a basic setup done in about six minutes. I've done a video showing that, but I mean, you could literally from start to finish. If once you know what you're doing, you could do it within an right. hour or two. That's like you. That's once you know what you're doing. But to to really just get set up in a day and following some tutorials, whether it's on YouTube, whether you could have you could have your whole store done in a, in a day. Do you know what I mean? And uh, sure. and that's uh, it's good to hear that stuff. And. Uh, and what, I, what I'm what like i keen to know as well about using the platform, and you said you had a lot of more success when it, when you moved to Commerce HQ, what was the difference in conversion rates? So you've marketed two exact same products, you've, mm-hmm. uh, you've marketed it the same, and the only yep. difference is you've had two different platforms. So tell us the difference between the conversion rate when you use Commerce HQ and when you use Shopify. Well, when I only because I was only doing those two products, the conversion yeah. rate was actually about ten percent at first because I was only I wasn't marketing other products other than these two yeah, yeah, yeah. items on Commerce HQ and on Shopify it was like point four six wow. something like that. It was still it was low, Crazy. like it was super low. So same amount of money, yeah. same targeting, yeah. two different fan pages. It was the only difference. Yeah. And, and like I said, the fan page that I used for Commerce HQ had nothing to do with the branding of the store, and yeah. that still I sold it like. Amazing, but after a month, me so you know going after I scaled it up. It was yeah. still at four. It, it went to four percent, which is still like Mate. you know that's a thousand times more than what it was on Shopify. That's a lot better. So you you, you were getting less than a half a percent essentially with Shopify, mm-hmm. and then uh, right. you know and then once you leveled out, once you started to scale and get you know send more traffic, you still maintain a four percent conversion rate, which is amazing i mean i think you know the thing is it's so common with commerce hq when i when I see a lot of the testimonials coming through and people posting their stuff on the groups 
it's very common to see four or five percent and and you sort of take it for granted but when i when i speak to people who use shopify again i forget like how low people's conversion rates can be when they're using shopify so it's right. uh, it's an amazing difference man so yeah nice one thanks for sharing that um the no next problem. next question that i was going to ask you and this is um this is what i like to ask i like to ask this every i want to ask this through all the you know the series is is um it's the uh, the challenges, and this is where you know, I like to say this is real people, real results, and uh, and real challenges. People are going to experience uh, obstacles and challenges along the way, and I feel like a lot of people give up in uh, in just in any uh, endeavor a lot too easily and uh, quite easily. And it's nice to when I speak to people, people get challenges, man. They're getting uh, getting obstacles along the way. Some people more mm -hmm. than others, but you're going to get them. And I like to know, you know, have you had any obstacles, any challenges in uh, running your ecom drop shipping business, uh, wherever? platform is whether it's shopify or e um commerce hq yeah I had a few um yeah. the first one was knowing who to listen to mm -hmm. um you know uh, i wish i mean i don't regret nothing because i learned i still learn from everybody i took trainings from but yeah. it was a lot of it was a runaround yeah. like a lot of people want to keep it a secret to start a purchase if you want purchases like they want you to you know pay them more to tell you the secret when they tell you to start off doing something totally different i, I don't like that from yeah. different trainings that i, I encounter yeah. like when I finally got to Commerce HQ, it, no, another thing is crazy. When I got to Commerce HQ, I was signing up, and I was all, already scheduled for a webinar with John Mack later on that day. Yeah. It was all this, it was like the light was shining on me that whole day. It was so weird. Yeah. I already, I saw your video, signed up to Commerce HQ. I was, I was already, from the day before, signed up to, you know, do a webinar with John Mack. Yeah. Did the webinar, and he explained how you get the boot camp and everything like that. And I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm already signed up to this platform. I just did it. Yeah. I got the boot camp. That was yeah. the perfect thing for me because everything that I was curious about of what I should be doing and how to do it, he explained it in the boot camp. Yeah. yeah. That was so listening to him. I listen to Tanner Larson. All his stuff is great. Positive. Yeah. Um, Devin Zander. All his stuff is great. I, what I learned is people that sell apps, yeah. usually they telling you the truth because they want you to make money to keep paying for their product, for their yes. app. Exactly. Exactly. Guys that are just experts and they just that's all they do, they will string you along because information is priceless yeah. to keep on making you buy more and more and more. Yeah. And for you, you'll end up spending your whole budget before you find out what you need to know. Exactly. That's exactly. the biggest thing, like as far as wasting money. Um, I had a PayPal issue, but I, I did find out a way to resolve it. Um, yeah. Stripe had, was holding my money for seven days. Yeah. And I just got over that. I mean, that kind of like halted me scaling up. Yeah. Um, for the last couple of weeks and then they finally ended it um, but PayPal will hold your money but if you go through the verification process and tell them that you have or if you have invoices and proof that you order products or have pictures of your own products or even take yeah. a review photo not to yeah. be slimy but if you got review photos of the product you're selling you upload that to show like to say you have it in your possession they're yeah. for your account uh, I mean they will but I mean, I only I use them both. I use Stripe and PayPal together, so it's not like I'm just using one or the other. I use them both. Yeah. yeah. Just to keep my conversion right. Yeah. And other challenge was well, some products are hit and miss. I mean, I don't call that a challenge. Yeah. But you know, I'm trying to brand my store. Yeah. To where I'm promoting more than just one product, and then when that fizzles out, yeah. I don't have nothing else. Yeah. That's so. Good. Knowing that should you start with a niche store, a general store, I, from my experience, from what I learned, I start off with niche stores yeah. or a niche general store where everything is like an activated charcoal store yeah. where I sell yeah. activated charcoal products, yeah. whether it's for home care, personal care. Yeah. I, I would never do that again. Really? But no. Not, not, I mean, it's fair enough. I mean, to myself. I mean, yeah, unless yeah. you got like, I don't know, like if you got like a, a, a fan store of, yeah. of a certain person. Yeah. Where you're selling all their shirts and sweatpants, that's different. Yeah. But, I mean, as far as personal care, home care, like my general store now, I sell some of those same products, but I sell just about anything I want. Yeah. To where if something fizzles out, fine, I'm already testing another product, I'm already gaining some traction on it. So, what are you saying? Are, make you, it look like. are you saying that you, uh, you do, you prefer a general store, or you prefer a niche store now? So, I was. Mr. Yeah, definitely. I definitely prefer a general store. Yeah, yeah. Due to the fact, I mean, I know some people, they they, they, they start up with a general store, they find a winning product, and then they make a niche store right, based yeah. around their product. That's yeah. fine. Yeah. I have nothing against people that do that. Mm -hmm. But that's like a temporary, some people, you know, I, I can't see me doing that 
I mean, now I can because I got free stores with Comic Ace Kill. Yeah, so yeah. But uh, <laughs> when I was with Shopify, yeah. when I was with Shopify, we had to pay for another store. You had to pay for but, three stores, you know what I mean? So at least you're going to get right. three stores for the so, price of one, man. Exactly. So if I, I did want to do that again, I mean, I will with Comics HQ, but I'm just yeah. saying, starting out, definitely a general store. Uh-huh. Um, just due to the fact that you have versatility to test more than one product. Exactly. And the congruency is fine when people come to your website. They're like, oh, they sell, they like a variety store. Okay, yeah. I trust them. Yeah. They got refused on all types of products. Okay, I trust them. You know what I'm saying? Exactly, exactly. But I, I don't really see a lot of, and also challenges is mental. You said people, they, they, they get discouraged easily. Mm. And one thing that I learned through my whole life, this is something my dad told me, my grandmother taught me, Yeah. is whatever you want, you have to write it down. Uh, Period. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. have to write it down. You really do have to read it all the time. And now that I'm older and I'm reading Think and Grow Rich and I'm seeing the videos on it, uh, how and listen to Earl Nightingale, all this write it down stuff. I'm like, okay. They're behind me, they're all behind me now, man. These books, they're good books, mate. You know what I mean? Art, great books and great audio, everything. They're on YouTube, yeah. everywhere. But for my dad to start me off that way, and my grandmother start him off that way, and yeah. these things are prevalent in business, that's probably the biggest challenge people. It's not a challenge for people, but that's one thing that anybody that want to be successful in business or just about anything in life need to start writing down what they want with a pen and paper, yeah. not in your phone. Don't record it. You know, really get a pen and paper and write it out. Got to. And it's some kind of magic in that, that isn't there? Like, I, I've done it before. Yeah, it's ancient. Yeah. I mean, what, we Native Americans, we Delaware, and my family Delaware Indians and yeah. and Moorish Americans. So it's like, this is this is an ancient practice yeah. of writing certain things out and repeating it and really speaking things into existence. This is yeah. something that's super ancient. 100%. So this is Egyptians. We part Egyptian as well. So this yeah. is like serious. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, yeah it's very true to do these things say it's a challenge but it's something every business person need to add to their life yeah not writing in your phone because writing in your phone is not the same no it's no. right with a pen and paper it don't pro- i see so. it a lot i see it a lot and it's funny it's not coincidence that you hear successful people say that again and again and again it is definitely 100 yeah. percent thing if you don't know where it is you're going whether that's you know you're writing it down as a vision or writing it down yeah. as a goal I mean, how are you ever actually going to be able to move towards that? So it's a, it's a right. nice to hear you say that because I feel like that's a sort of like a secret, not really talked about, um, you know, part of success in any kind of uh, business is that the whole like, you know, it's, it's having the goals, having the, the, the vision of where you want to go. And that's, it's just a, right. that's just a part of, I suppose, of getting your mindset right. So many people don't mm-hmm. realize that they're not actually, they're not their mindset is not correct uh, in that moment of time. And I feel, for me, that's a part of my journey. You know, in the past, I may have thought I was ready, but when I look back to, uh, you know, where I am today and where I am then, just when it comes to my mindset, it's just, I was just right. a completely different mindset, you know. And that, and if you, mm-hmm. if you find you struggle sometimes with things like procrastination, with giving up too easy, stuff like that, mm-hmm. that may be, uh, you, know, a, a, you know, a subconscious block or an issue that you need to resolve, um, you know, through like, you know, reading, through courses, through audio books, just to get your mind prepared for what it is that you want to achieve. So there's a few things you said there, man. It's just getting your mind right and, and writing the stuff down. So being clear on what right. you want. So not, I appreciate you sharing that. That's the first time someone spoke about that. So if you're listening, take that on board I feel like that's a real good bit of advice right now definitely so uh, mate the next question I was going to ask you was uh, you know I was going to talk about how you overcome the challenge but you sort of really talked about that it's more like just being proactive not giving up and uh, and just you know pushing through that and it does eventually uh, you know so the uh, you overcome it essentially but uh, the next part mm-hmm. I would like to say is that it's the it's the challenge of testing products I mean how many products have you te- you might have been lucky you may have not tested too many but you may have mm-hmm. tested a lot, but what, what was the kind of volume of products that you had to test just before you start getting traction? I mean, you might have got your odd products with a few sales here and there, but for one which you felt like, yeah, this one's doing good. You know, I'm feeling this is going right. well. How many products did that take you to sort of get that, uh, to get to that point? To get to that, well, it's like I said before with with, with changing the platform Yeah, was that at the time I was, I was just running – it was seven, I think it was seven different products. They all was getting sales, but the one was just getting the most. I tested them, but I let them all keep running. That's the thing. Yeah. And um, when I let them all run for two weeks, yeah. That that, and I didn't change the budget. I was going to scale up the budget, but I just said, you know what? I'm just try this and let them all stay on the same budget. It was a ten dollar day budget. Yeah. Let them all run for two weeks, and the one just started to flourish. But I felt like for the amount of traffic it was getting. 
the view con you know the amount of clicks it was getting the view contents you know didn't match up and then like I said I found that app that can show me what's going on people come to my shop bar store yeah but um I would say recently uh, I'll say within those seven products really that's that's very good the, very good because I mean but before I mean yeah. but before that when I thought I was testing yeah when I like I said not knowing who to listen to and you know the people was telling you get a hundred view contents yeah copy the asset go to add the cart get a hundred of those copy the asset that's the biggest myth in facebook because yeah. first of all when you duplicate the asset to start all over at a different level of the pixel you're yeah. starting the whole process all over again anyway so you're losing that you lose all the data number one and what you really should have did was start purchasing them anyway like from the beginning yeah because that's what you want isn't so, it, purchases. It, it's crazy yeah. and another thing i mean another thing that i started to do though when it came to that ten, you know, the ten, uh, ten dollar a day thing was, whichever, because the, the one product, whenever I get a hundred visits to a product, I immediately make a look alike. Yeah. To find my audience, immediately yeah. make a look alike. I don't. It, right. I get on it as soon as I, as soon as I see that magic number one hundred, I don't care what's going on with the product at. Yeah. I make them look alike. Nice. And. That's the best way for me to like not even I ain't gonna say scale it up, but to really really test a product. If you can get a hundred visitors, you make a look alike. Where of those hundred visitors, people that, sh that are interested in their product, yeah. and then you test it with that same ad. That's the best way to really know you have a definite winner to me. Yeah. But yeah. Um, like I said before that, I, I, I can't say I was actually testing because I, I didn't have the right information to yeah. test. Yeah. Until you know, like I, I started a I purchase. On my own, I said, hey, I'm, I might as well start a purchase. And then it started to come out. Every video I watch here and there, the guy doing print on the man, he said start a purchase. Yeah. Tanner Larson said start a purchase. And then John Mack gave, gave me everything I needed in life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, John Mack. <laughs> like, Thank you. Thank you. It makes sense now. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. once I did that, now when I say I test now, obviously it's, it's a different process to where like the one product I scaled up, it was a seasonal product. I'm gonna put it on hold for a couple of weeks and I'm gonna relaunch it again. Yeah. But um, the other products that I'm testing now, I'm testing ten products right now. Yeah. One of them is growing a little bit of legs. Yeah. But I, I test two different ways now. I use yeah. a video with the product. Yeah. And then I will make a catalog. I use a Facebook catalog with my test now. Yeah. Um, when I use a Facebook catalog, like I have a general store, but I have products at all have similar tags and all under the same niche, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll target, I'll add those three together into, I add three products similar in, in one uh, Facebook catalog ad. Market the one that I think is is going to be the best one and put the offer with it in the ad copy. Yeah. And at the bottom I'll say, or choose one of these below or choose one of, you know, yeah. our other top sellers here. Nice. And, so far, I sell two out of three of them. Usually, the one that's featured, and then another one will sell. That's what's been on on. Nice. But what I've noticed is using that feature, I get cheaper traffic to my store, and my cost for purchase is actually lower than really? what it was before. Nice. So far, and yeah. I only been doing it for about three, about three, four days, something like that. But I just was figuring, let me fully use Facebook's algorithm mm -hmm. and pixel strength. Yeah. And, and let me see what this would do with this type of testing, even though it's not a video or anything yeah. like that. I test it that way, and I test using a video with a regular, with the same ad copy for both. I just don't have, a, you know, another product below or anything like that. Yeah. And that's the new way I'm testing right now is allow Facebook to use their algorithm and yeah. or that, that feature yeah. and also the video and see what happens that way. Nice, nice. It, it sounds to me like you are... Uh... You give everything a good thorough chance to uh, to 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 succeed with uh, with, what, with what products you're testing, man. And it's good to see you're testing the various uh, uh, the functions of Facebook as well. I think a lot of people just you know just whip up a, a photo or or a quick video they've nicked from somewhere, and they literally just run it as an ad. They leave it for a day, and they you know they stop it. And it's uh, nice to know that you actually give give your uh, products a, a good good go first and actually and test different things like you're saying you're testing the carousel ads mm -hmm. or the, the facebook uh, dynamic ad as well so it's nice so people yeah the main see, the main reason why i do is yeah. if somebody see it they can see the price and if they click on it that means they really want it mm. exactly so exactly. i think that's that may be the reason why the prices i mean uh my cost for perversion conversion may be lower yeah 
because yeah. they can actually see the price yeah. and it, you know what I mean? It's less secretive or already, you know, already ad. ready for it. And that, that's a good point. Actually, if someone has clicked on an ad and they know the price, that means mm-hmm. that they, they already think that the product's valuable. You know, they think, oh, it's not, right. it's not at a price range. They're not, you wouldn't click on an ad if you've seen a picture of a product and it was, you know, ridiculously priced up. You would just leave the leave it. And But if you actually, right. if you're willing to click on the ad, then obviously you're definitely much more uh, warmer traffic. So that's a very good point, man. Nice one for sharing that with mm-hmm. everyone. That's, uh, if you're listening yeah. to that, give that a go. So that does make a lot of sense. And then, like you're saying, you're giving people a bit more of an option in, under one ad so you might have you know for instance i see people do something similar they might have um t-shirts or whatever and they might have five skull t-shirts and there'd be a selection of five different ones and and they're, they're right. they will find out from which people are clicking on what product is is a better product and so you're getting you're essentially marketing five products for the price of one ad you know in the end so. right true but i only do three though i don't know yeah, yeah, maybe yeah. four but yeah but that's what i do nice man um and it's working i mean so far yeah. i mean it's not I don't know if I'm going to – I have to decide. I know I'm going to do a lookalike and pick the one that's winning the most, obviously. I mean, yeah. that's just the way I want to do it. Nice, nice. But I don't know how to scale up. I mean, how if I need to scale up a certain level or, yeah. you know what I'm saying, with it. or You'll get there. With I mean, the that's the only decision with that. But it's working so far. Nice, man. Well, I wish you luck, mate. Keep me informed on how that one goes, man. Um, mm-hmm. So there's two more questions. We're gonna we're getting to the end of this now. I'm just gonna ask you two questions, and one of them is, you know, what would you say is your biggest factor for your success so far? So what's helped you? And I mean, you've probably got into a little bit up just before, but if you sort of round it up for you, what was you know what's contributed the most in uh, in your in what's working for you? You know, whether it's your mindset or, or certain things that you do in your business, but what contributes the most do you feel to your success so far in running an e-commerce store? Constantly learning and being confident. Yeah. And I mean, if you were, well, also knowing who to listen to, I mean, that's a big major thing, but given and, you know, you have to give to receive. Yeah. So like, like, like this interview right now, Yeah. we're both giving, you're giving out information. I'm giving out information. Yeah. Good things going to come to us no matter what we do in life. Good things going to come back to us. Yeah. But helping other people in the business as well. Mm-hmm. I feel like it helps my business, even though they don't know what website to come to or they don't buy anything. Yeah. For some reason, when I do good things for people in, in this business, my business grows every yeah. time, one way or another. And different opportunities come my way. But I would say confidence because if you have confidence, be positive and positive ideas are going to keep coming to you. Yeah. So just trying to stay positive no matter what. Even if exercise, even if you if you're feeling grumpy, just exercise for a little bit. That change your whole body, you get your blood flowing. Like this makes you stand positive. Nice, nice. You know what? I, I literally love what you're just saying, then, mate. You know, and I and I swear this is through my own experience as well. Is when I give uh, of myself, give it, whether it's my time, my my love, my compassion, or my help, or whatever it is. And uh, right. I just seem to things seem to come through various ways back into my life. In a, in a, it's like a mm-hmm. boomerang. Like a, you're like a magnet. So you, yeah. you give away, yeah. you give, and you just people give back to you. And it's uh, it's crazy how that works. But I've had some of the, yeah. the best experience of that. I mean, I've done things where I've been scared to do them, and I've done it just to help someone out. And I swear, something amazing has happened the next morning, or literally like ten minutes after I've done that good deed. Yeah. And I believe what yeah. you say, man. So people listening to that, it may not be directly to do with you know uh, a market tip but that's that's right man if you if you do good in life in general uh you'll probably yeah. get ideas or you might come across a video or you may come, come across a bit of content or a product which will will make up for that you know for the good that you just done you're going to get it back in that way man so i appreciate you saying that that's a really good tip mate that is um and that's it mate listen this is it. i was going to say but you sort of answered it anyway but i mean if you've got one tip just one tip. I know you said about what's good for you, but if you're just going right. to give, if you're saying to someone else right now who's listening to this, uh, a young aspiring e-compreneur, what would you, uh, you know, what would you say to them? Just as a bit of advice or one tip for them uh, if they're getting started. If they were getting started, yeah, I would say I don't know about the boot camp if it's still the same mm-hmm. coupon with it when you sign up for Count Yeah, it should be. But I think so, yeah. If that's still included, yeah. And if you, if you, especially if you got children, if you really want to raise and, and take care of your kids the right way, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sign up the Commerce HQ, get the boot camp. Number one. Nice. Number two, don't be. I mean, people see products on AliExpress. Mm-hmm. They be three, four dollar products. People yeah. try to sell them for five dollars. That's yeah. a waste of time. Yeah. 
triple the price. Maybe some products is three, like like activated charcoal is two two dollars. Yeah, you can get away with selling it for thirty bucks. Crazy. Put the value in it. The value represents. I mean, you you raise the price up, people look at that as being valuable. People look at it like it's a it's a status. Don't be afraid to raise the price. Yeah. I mean, you don't have to worry about Amazon. If you worry about Amazon, you never sell anything. Yeah. Just just have a valuable like your price points is always going to be a, a good thing to start with yeah. when you see a product. Don't think just because you're selling it for a dollar more than what it was on AliExpress is going to sell. Yeah. It's probably not. <laughs> so it's yeah. like yeah. don't do that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But um also try to be upfront being upfront with my customers. I have a contact phone number. Yeah. Um the just basically just trying to be more as straight up as possible. Yeah. Like yeah. you don't have to put on your product description how long the shipping is going to be, but put on your 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 um your fax page yeah. how long it's going to take. And yeah. put it in the email, the yeah. thank you email and yeah. things like that so they know how long it's going to take. Yeah. Um yeah. but I I would say definitely come to College HQ and get the boot camp because yeah. that right there not only starts you off you can always go back to it. And it's only, it's only four or five video. What is it four or five video? That's, well, it's, it's four, four main videos, yeah, four small. Yeah, to two. Exactly. So when you, when, with those videos, compared to the other trains that I paid for, they had like 12 videos yeah. and all those runarounds. Like, you, you're not going to lose out. No. Dealing no. with John Mac's system. No. It, it's like a... It, there's no guarantees of anything. Mm-hmm. But if I had to tell somebody who's worth paying for training, it would be John Mac. Yeah. Yeah. Due to the fact that you get this, the boot camp for sign up with Comic HQ, you're killing two birds with one stone, and you'll make a lot of money fast. Exactly. That's all I that. Nice one, man. I appreciate that, and that's right. That that Comic HQ boot camp, um, that was actually something that I uh, show people about in around December time. And John Mack, the founder of Comic HQ, he done a boot camp, which, like, I mean, I'm sure you'll say is true as well. Yeah, he could have easily charged money for it and i'm sure other gurus or other people have charged more money for less or for more inferior products and that is a great product and it's free mm-hmm. if you sign up yep. to commerce hq so i'll put a link in that description to a youtube video showing you how to get that so whether that's um uh you can check it out it's in the facebook group the commerce hq crew group i always say commerce hq crew the commerce hq group you can uh, see it in there but you have to be a member of commerce hq so you've got to sign up or you can actually just uh get a link to it by messaging the admin uh, or sorry the support for commerce hq and they will give you a link to or access to it but you need to sign up to it so it's a win-win you're going to get three stores at the price of one and you're going to get access mm-hmm. to the commerce hq boot camp for free and as yar said that was uh, a really great help for him when uh, getting started with commerce hq so i'm going to leave it there man so thank you yar i appreciate you coming on and i'm sure everyone else appreciate it as well man oh, no problem thank you for having me no worries mate